This is Father Adam, and I would like to share with you one of the events that made a profound impact on my spiritual life. You see, I was in the high school seminary program in Chicago, and I used to travel every single day about 45 minutes on these trains where I would have to switch from one train to the next and walk through the tunnel to switch from the blue line to the red line. And in these tunnels, there were all these beggars, and I was always so... uh focused on walking without noticing any of them to the right or to the left. All these homeless people, all these people asking for money, all the, all these people who were, who were there in their desperate situations. But one day I noticed a young lady about 25 years old and she had a sign in front of her that said, I have AIDS. Please help me. I have AIDS. Please help me. And I don't know why, but I was struck right in front of her. I couldn't move. And I stood in front of her and I looked at her and I said to her, I said, I don't have any money, but is there any way that I could help you? And she looked at me and she said, hug me. Hug me, she said. And you know what I did at that moment when she said that? This is what I did. That was my reaction. And she saw it. And after a little while, I did hug her. But it wasn't the same as if I had hugged her with the enthusiasm that should befall and should characterize a follower of the Lord Jesus who said, whatsoever you do to these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you do unto me. And the need for touch, the healing touch is so profound. And I've been reflecting on this, particularly during this pandemic, when people are dying without being able to be touched. Can you imagine being married to somebody for 50 or 60 years and then they're dying in an ICU room and you not being able to hug them or touch them or caress them. When I visit people who are dying in hospital rooms, that's one of the most comforting things is the touch of their family members. And that's why we anoint with oil, with holy oil and the priest touches the dying person. And what are we saying when we are anointing a dying person or a sick person? What are we saying? We're saying, what you're going through is important. I am here. What you are going through is holy. It's a big deal. A priest can't anoint with gloves. I have to do it with my finger. My fingers, I have to anoint with them. Because the touch is so very important. I think that's one of the evil aspects that this pandemic has wrought. You know, Jesus healed through touch. If you look at chapter 13 of Luke's gospel, we have a woman who was crippled that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. And she was in a synagogue where he was teaching and she was there afflicted with an evil spirit that her that kept her sick for 18 years and she was bent over and could not straighten up at all. She was like this hunched over. And when Jesus saw her, he called out to her and said, woman, you are free from your sickness. And the Bible says in verse 13, he placed his hands on her and at once she straightened herself up and praised God. Because crippled people, sick people, afflicted people during Jesus' day were the untouchable. They were taught to be cursed by God, by their sickness. Even when they would go into a synagogue, there was a special place for them. They couldn't mingle with other people. First of all, in synagogues, there were special places for women. Women couldn't be where uh, men were. So she had one whammy going against her and then she was crippled. And also... In, in the Jewish law, women didn't have to go to the synagogue. It was thought that it wasn't important for them to go because they were pure property. They had no rights. 
And so she's got all these things going against her and she goes into the synagogue and she knows that if she goes to Jesus and if he places his hands on her with that healing touch, that she will be healed. And he did. And he wants to do the same thing to each and every one of us. Whatever is keeping us bent over in our life, whatever is not allowing us to straighten up in our life and to walk upright with our dignity high, whatever is keeping us bogged down in our life, Jesus says, straighten up. Let me put my hands on you, Jesus says, my healing hands, my healing presence to allow you to straighten up so that you can live the healed life, the blessed life, the love-filled life, the peace-filled life that I want you to have. Now, when Jesus did that, the official of the synagogue was angry that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. So he spoke up and said to the people, there are six days in which we should work. So come during those days and be healed, but not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites. Any one of you would untie your ox or your donkey from the stall and take it out to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here is this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept in his bonds for 18 years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath? His answer made his enemies ashamed of themselves, while the people rejoiced over all the wonderful things that he did. First of all, the first thing to notice there is Jesus calls her daughter. That and daughter of Abraham. This is the first time in all of the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, that we have a woman being called daughter of Abraham because it was only men who were taught to be sons of Abraham. And Jesus says, no, women and men are in God's eyes the same and have the same dignity and are likewise children of God. And also Jesus says by saying daughter of Abraham, he's saying you're part of the family of God. He gives her back her dignity. He heals her on a Sabbath against the rules because the rules were made for people, not people for rules. What is Jesus saying? You are more important to me than the rules, than anything else. You are more important to me than even me obeying all these structures. You are more important to me. And the same thing Jesus wants to tell each and every one of us whom he wants to heal with his touch. How do we experience the touch of Jesus? In prayer and in our relationship with each other and in receiving a blessing. And I hope that you are receiving this virtual touch right now through my smile that is filling you with a lot of peace and a lot of love so that you too can straighten up in your life. Now, there's a lot of people who need the healing touch in our life right now. And whatever we do when we bring the healing touch to people through our kindness, our good deeds, our good words, bringing them the good news, not bad news, whenever we do that to them, we do it to Jesus. So I encourage you, during this time particularly, to sow kindness, sow love, reach out in so many ways, even virtually, and allow people to experience through you, through your touch, even if it's just, you know, virtual, like I'm sending you right now, the touch of the Lord Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you today and always make his face shine upon you as I bless you today with my wish that you may not make the mistake that I did, that you may not make the mistake that I did. I missed my chance that day to hug Jesus. Don't miss yours. 
Oh, I did hug her, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. I missed my chance. Don't miss yours. I missed my chance that day, and from that day on, I was committed to never miss my chance again. And that's my prayer for each and every one of us, that we may not miss our chances to touch each other and in so be touched by Jesus. As I touch you right now with my blessing, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.